Welcome back. Today we're going to make a rolled collar coat for warm weather uh, without sleeves um, and with a lighter material. First thing you're going to need are going to be your patterns and then a material of your choice. And then you're going to pin the patterns down to the material and cut out leaving some seam allowance. Um, then after that you are going to lay them out so that you may uh, mark them out. I am using two marking methods. I am going to first cut out my markers and then I'm going to use a chalk to line them up. Actually I'm using three methods uh, just so that I don't get confused during um, the sewing. So you can use your tailor's chalk to mark out and then after that I'm using a thread and needle to mark out the spot so that if the chalk rubs off during sewing I am not uh, looking for points uh, the thread will help me after that I am going to cut out these different points I got this um, pattern from the Angela Kane website so if you'd like the specific pattern please go to our website and if you want a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to do each of these, if you're new to sewing, then you can go to her site as well or her YouTube channel, Angela Kane. So I did this for all the rest of the patterns that I had cut out. And I also cut out um, lining for the inside um, without any seam allowance. And this is what you have. And I did this for all the pieces that had um, a yellow patch, which was meant for um, the inside material to give it some kind of um, definition. Uh, so the first thing we're going to deal with is um, the collar area. This is the inner collar which will be attached to the front patches. So before we start, we're going to take care of all dots um, that you find in the pattern. I'm going to pin down all the dots and sew them. I sew going off and then I tie them up. After that, iron. Always remember to iron as you work because the ironing kind of keeps your uh, material in form. For dots at the front, at the, back, at the top, you want to iron them inwards and then that's at the side you want to iron them downwards so next thing I'm going to do I'm going to sew together my front pieces and iron it down to flatten it out this is where the rolled coat is going to be attached and then I'm going to snip my corners just to remove um, any bulk then I'm going to attach it to the back uh, part and I'm going to pin this down um, you can use whatever pins you have office pins or pins with um, the heads and then I'm going to now that I pin it down I'm going to sew it so going back to the front collar the one that you see um, I'm going to attach this piece this piece will be used to finally um, close down this upper part to um, the inside part of the collar um, I know it may be a bit a bit confusing but if you just follow the steps that are given um, on the website it then um, makes sense and if this is your first time sewing I would I would then say maybe start with something simpler and then uh, come to this when you have made a few more pieces so here I have attached because it's a bit um, curvy I have to iron at um, different angles and just keep manipulating it and manipulating it as I iron but ironing is so important and I didn't make this coat in one day I made this coat in a couple of days so you always have to stay patient when you're making uh, projects so I'm going to attach the lower part you won't see any of these parts because they'll be folded into um, the inside part of the collar but this is to give it body and now I'm going to attach the outer collar part to the main body and again I pin everything down 
before I sew it and this time we are pinning the whole um, length uh, from the inside all the way from the sides all the way to uh, to the other side so that after we've sewn it then we can um, turn it inside out I don't have to worry if things are not matching because that seam allowance so we'll just cut it off after so here we have pinned down everything and we're just gonna sew all the way uh, around so that's what we've done and um, the next thing is to cut off that seam allowance so that it's not bulky and so just like half an inch away you can just approximate nothing too small and if you have um, a way to like use a zigzag stitch to lock the end this would be a good time after that where it curves we're going to cut little snippets of triangles on curves that come um, on the outside if this was curving to the inside then just small slits would do it but this is curving to the outside so um, triangles are usually best and now we turn it inside if you have some kind of smooth pointy object like a comb or chopstick like in my case you can use it to kind of sharpen your corners and just keep removing those small threads that we used as our tags as you go along don't wait for the last bit or moment to remove those tags just as you work remove the tags so now I'm going to again iron them iron everything down to really like flatten it and you can see by now it's really starting to take shape you just have to be patient and keep manipulating and tagging and moving to a slower pace so for that little piece of cloth that we had sewn to the upper collar uh, I'm now going to hand stitch it down to attach so that you won't be able to see um, the attachment but the cloth that we added was really necessary to hold that down so we'll just use um, an invisible stitch if you know how to hand sew then you know what I'm talking about if you don't then um, I think I would suggest googling it um, just to see what I mean by an invisible hand stitch um, really something that can't be seen <laughs> I guess it's kind of self explanatory explain what's the word I don't know after that I'm going to use um, a tape to kind of it's an adhesive to when you iron it it kind of it's like a glue kind of thing so it holds the, the two fabrics together without having to to sew in case you want to um, hold that down I don't have a saja so when it comes to the edges I usually use a zigzag stitch or I fold in so I'm just going to put a temporary stitch to keep it in place while I continue working on the item then after that I'll just cut it off next are pockets I wanted pockets in um, this coat because I like putting pockets wherever I can so we're gonna attach our pockets to the inside part um, there are tags that you you should follow, especially if you're using um, if you're using our patterns. Usually, there are tags you'd follow. It makes it much easier when you use a pattern. So we're just gonna sew that place, that 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 part alone, and then after that, we're gonna iron just to make it flat, because you kind of want to always work with your material flat. Now that we're done adding the pockets on both sides. We're going to go round the whole material on the sides, on both sides, so that it's like a clean finish. After you've done that, uh, you're going to cut the top and bottom corner so that you can iron it down of the, of the pockets. Um, this really helps to remove bulk, but also for your pocket to kind of be flexible and move so yeah so we're going to iron it down and um, really flatten it out so that when you see it on the other side um, 
you don't get any folds you don't get any bumps and things like that my advice is before you connect these materials is to close up those edges for example with a zigzag stitch if you have a saja to use a saja i didn't have a saja and i didn't want to use a zigzag stitch so i'm going to use a saja later so you can see now that we're done it's it's a clean um pocket and uh, the last thing i'm going to do is do the seams mine is a sleeveless coat because i'm in a warm climate and also i'm going to use the lower i'm also going to close up the lower seam and then you're done and you can close it up you can leave it open and you enjoy it